Live from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering DataWorks Summit 2018. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Welcome back everyone. You are watching day two of theCUBE's live coverage of DataWorks here in San Jose, California. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. I'm coming at you with my co-host, James Kobielis. We're joined by Parta Sitala. He is the Chief Technology Officer at Robin Systems. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Pleasure to be here. You're a first timer, so we, we promise we don't bite. Actually, I'm not. I was on theCUBE ah. uh, at DockerCon in 2016. Oh, well, excellent. Yeah, okay, so you're, now you're a veteran. Right. Yes, so. Robin Systems, as before the cameras were rolling, we were talking about it, it's about four years old, based mm -hmm. here in San Jose, venture-backed company. Tell us a little bit about, more about the company and what you do. Absolutely. First of all, thanks for hosting me here. Uh, so, like you said, Robin is a Silicon Valley-based uh, company. Um, our focus is in allowing applications such as big data, databases, NoSQL, and AI ML to run within the Kubernetes platform. Um, and what we have built is a product that converges uh, storage, components like storage, networking, application workflow management, along with Kubernetes, to create a one-click experience where users can get managed services kind of feel when they're deploying these applications. And they can also do one-click lifecycle management on these apps. So our thesis has essentially been to, instead of looking at this problem from an infrastructure up into application, to actually look at it from the applications down and then say, let the applications drive the underlying infrastructure to meet the user's requirements. And is that your differentiating factor, would you say? Yeah, I think it is, because uh, most of the folks out there today are looking at it as if it's a component-based play. It's like, you want to bring storage to uh, Kubernetes or networking to Kubernetes. But the challenges are not really around storage and uh, networking. If you look at, the, if you talk to the operations folks, they say that, you know what, yeah, those are underlying problems. But my challenge is more along the lines of, okay, my CIO says the initiative is to make my applications mobile. They want to go across different clouds. That's my challenge. The line of business user says that I want to get a managed service experience. Yes, storage is a thing that you got to manage underneath. But I want to go and click and create my, let's say an Oracle database or a Hadoop uh, distribution so and so on. In terms on. of the developer so experience the, here, what sort of, you know, from the application down, give us a sense for how Robin Systems tooling, your product enables that degree of you know, specification of the application logic that will then get containerized within the... Uh... Oh, absolutely. So, uh, like I said, we want applications to drive the infrastructure. What it means is that we, Robin is a software pl platform. We layer ourselves on top of the machines that we sit on, whether it is bare metal machines on premises or VMs, or even in Azure, uh, Google Cloud, as well as AWS. Then we make the underlying compute, storage, network resources almost invisible. So we just treat it as a pool of resources. Now once you have this pool of resources, they can be attached to the applications that are being deployed as con inside containers. Mm -hmm. Now, so that is the, I mean it's a software play, installed on machines. Once it's installed, the experience now moves away from infrastructure into applications. You log in, you can see a portal. You have a lot of applications in that portal. Uh, we ship support for about 25 applications or some such. So these are templates that the yes. developer can then customize to their specific requirements, or no? A absolutely, we ship reference templates for pretty much a wide variety of the most popular big data, NoSQL, database, AI, ML work uh, applications today. But they are, again, as I said, it's a reference implementation. Typically, customers take their reference implementation and they enhance it, or they use that to onboard their custom apps, for example, or the apps that we don't ship out of the box. So it's a very open, extensible platform. Uh, but the goal being that whatever the application might be, in fact, we keep saying that if it runs on Linux, it runs on Robin, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so the idea here is that you can bring anything and we just flip over a switch. You can make it uh, one-click deploy, one-click manage, one-click mobile across clouds. That's you, you keep mentioning this one-click and this idea of, of it being so easy, so convenient, so seamless. Is that what would you, is that what you say is the biggest concern of your customers? Is that, is that they, is this ease and speed? Or what are some other things that are on their minds that you want to deliver? Right, uh, so one click of course is a user experience part, but what is the real challenge? So the real challenge is there are a wide variety of tools being used by enterprises today. Even the data analytic pipeline has a lot across the ingest, store, process, serve pipeline. Users don't want to deal with setting it up and keeping it up and running. They just don't want that. They want to get their job done, right? Now, when you want to get their job done, you really want to hide the underlying 
details of those platforms. And the best way to convey that, the best way to give that experience is to make it a single click experience from the UI. So I keep calling about one click because that is the experience that you get to hide the underlying complexity for these apps. So does your environment actually compile executable code based on that one click experience or where does the compilation and containerization actually happen in your distributed architecture? All right, so um, I think the simplest way You're a prem-based offering, right? You're not in the cloud yourself. No, we are. So we work in all <laughs> the three public, big three public clouds, whether it is um, oh, okay. Azure, AWS, or Google. So your entire application suite is, a, is containerized itself for deployment into these clouds? Is yes, that it is. Okay. So the idea here is, I think <coughs> let's, let's simplify it significantly, right? You have Kubernetes today. It can run anywhere, on-premises, in the public cloud, mm -hmm. and so on. Kubernetes is a great platform for orchestrating containers. Mm -hmm. But it is largely inaccessible to a certain class of data-centric applications. Yeah. We make that possible. But our take is just onboarding these applications on Kubernetes does not solve your CXO or your line of business users' problems. You have to make the management from an application point of view, not from a container management point of view, but an application point of view, a lot easier. And that is where we kind of create this experience that I talked about, one click experience. Give us a sense for how, you, we're here at DataWorks, and it's, it's the Horton Works show. To discuss with us your partnership with Horton Works, and you know, we've heard the announcement of HDP 3.0 and containerization support. Just give us a rough sense for how you align or partner with Horton Works in this area. Absolutely. So, um, it's kind of interesting because Horton Works is, is a data management platform, if, if you think about it from that point of view. And when we engaged with them first, so some of our customers have been using the product, Hortonworks on top of Robin, so orchestrating Hortonworks, making it a lot easier to use. Right. One of the requirements was, are you certified with Hortonworks? And the challenge that Hortonworks also had is they had never certified a container-based deployment of Hortonworks before. Mm. And they actually were very skeptical that, you know, you guys are saying all these things. Can you actually containerize and run Hortonworks? So we worked with Hortonworks and we are, I mean if you go to the Hortonworks website you'll see that we are the first in the entire industry who have been certified as a container based play that can actually deploy and manage Hortonworks. Mm. So they have certified us by running a wide variety of tests which they call the QATS test suite. And uh, when we got certified, the only other players in the market that got that stamp of approval was Microsoft and Azure. Uh, and uh, EMC with Isilon. So you're in good are you company. So we have, yeah. I think we are in great company. So you're certified to work with HTTP 3.0 or the prior version or both? So when we got certified, we were still in the 2.x okay. version of uh, Hortonworks. HTTP 3.0 is more relatively uh, newer okay. version. But our plan is that we want to continue working with uh, Hortonworks to get certified as, uh, as they release their product. And also help them because HTTP 3.0 also has some container uh, based uh, orchestration and uh, deployment. So you want to help them provide the underlying infrastructure so that it becomes easier for Dion to spin up more containers. The higher level of security and governance and all these things you're describing, they have to be over the Kubernetes layer. You know, Hortonworks supports it in their data plane services portfolio. Do you, does your does Robin Systems Solution portfolio tap into any of that or do you provide your own layer of uh, so security and, and metadata management and so forth? Yeah, so we don't want to In the context of what you offer. Right, so we don't want to take away the, the security model that the application itself provides because yeah. people might have set it up so that they are doing governance. It's not just logging in and audit control and things like that. There's some governance built yeah. into it. We don't, want to, we don't want to change that. We want to keep the same experience and the same workflow that customers have. Yeah. So we just integrate with uh, whatever security that the application has. Uh, we of course provide security in terms of isolating these different apps that are running on the, uh, the Robin platform or the security or, or the access uh, into the application itself is left to the apps themselves. When I say app, I'm talking about Hortonworks yeah, sure. or any other databases. Moving forward, as you, as you think about ways you're going to augment and, and enhance and alter the Robin platform, what are some of the biggest trends that are driving your decision making around that in the sense of, you know, as we know that companies are living with this deluge of data, mm -hmm. how are you helping them manage it better? Sure. Uh, I think there are a few trends that we are closely watching. Uh, one is around cl cloud mobility. Uh, CIOs are, want the, their applications along with their data to be available where their end users are. It's almost like follow the sun model where you might have generated the data in one cloud 
and at a different time, different time zone, you'll basically want to keep the app as well as data. So we are following that very closely. How we can enable the mobility of data and apps a lot easier in that world. Um, the other one is um, around the general AI ML workflow. So one of the challenges there, of course, you have great apps like TensorFlow or Theano, Cafe. These are very good AI ML toolkits. But one of the challenges that people face is they are buying this very expensive, let's say, an NVIDIA DGX box. This box costs about 150 grand each. How do you keep these boxes busy so that you're actually getting a good return on investment? Will require you to better manage the resources offered with these boxes. So we are also monitoring that space and we're saying that how can we take the Robin platform and how do you enable the better utilization of GPUs, better sharing of GPUs for running your AI ML DL uh, kind of workloads. Great. So those are the thing, two key trends that we are closely watching. We'll be discussing those at the next DataWorks Summit, I'm sure, at some other time in the future. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE, Parta. Thank Parta. you, my pleasure, thanks. I'm Rebecca Knight for James Kobielus. We will have more from DataWorks coming up in just a little bit.